let's build a guitar from scratch. Okay, my workshop is now functional. I've built a home workshop, a home studio. Uh, due to COVID-19, I'm not back at the Crimson Factory. And while I was getting all of this up and running and uh, functional, all I've done since basically March time is customized kit guitars. And I've had a blast doing it, but at heart, I like taking a lump of wood and making something beautiful out of it. And that is what we are going to do in this series. Burn it. Ah, <laughs> yay! Nebula is a guitar I built a while ago. I think you're gonna go and see a montage of that. It's a stunning instrument, if I do say so myself. And uh, it was an idea of taking an electroacoustic and completely reimagining how that could be made. Uh, I've learned from that. I'm building a second version of her. It is gonna be, it's gonna have a multi-laminate neck. It's gonna have fan frets. It is gonna have uh, bracing, etc. but be made in an interesting way. Uh, so, yeah, please, watch, enjoy. Let me know if you don't, and I will go into a corner and cry. Don't forget that Crimson is a business, as well as a YouTube channel. We make guitars, we make guitars to order. This is for a customer, and if you want something, anything, we can do it. And, uh, you know, I've got a fantastic team of luthiers who do this sort of thing, so hit us up could be fun. Here we have our ebony fretboard, several pieces of flamed sycamore and a chunk of mahogany type wood. And I'm making the body out of a lightly flamed, torrified sycamore. The original was mahogany and it was a little bit heavy. And the top, instead of what was, I think, burl poplar and wasn't quite strong enough, is heavily heavily sexy burl uh, figured maple. And I'm gonna get both the front and the back and hopefully headstock veneers out of this chunk of wood. Oh yes. And that is not the design we're putting on it, not by a long shot. Uh, this is a single cutaway, Les Paul-ish type build. Yes, I'm fully aware I've built a lot of single cutaway Les Paul inspired guitars over the years. Here's another one. I've got a shtick, what can I say? So that is a lot of gorgeous wood, but at heart, the design is what matters. Uh, I've got a piece of gorgeous, lightly flamed, actually, ebony. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking this, and I'm gonna be making a fan fretboard by hand. Should be fun. First job is I'm gonna take this already relatively straight, albeit a little bit thick board, and chuck it through my Triton thicknesser and get it about down to dimension. We're then going to radius the fretboard, uh, which is gonna be a, a light compound radius from 12 to about 14 or 16. And uh, then we will mark out and cut the fret slots. So, I've got the thicknesser that lives in that corner. I've got the planer that lives underneath the router table, table saw, uh, the Triton work center. And uh, it's surprisingly functional. I've got a really small space, but a lot of stuff in here. I've ended up at seven millimeters thick, and that is good for now. Now, I love hand planes. I absolutely, I absolutely love hand planes, as you can no doubt tell. But I also dislike wasting time. And uh, there are times when a hand plane is the best thing for the job, and there are times when a great big loud, noisy, messy machine is. Yes, I said loud and noisy because it's both loud and noisy. Uh, anyway, next up, the center line. The center line is the most important thing uh, in your existence when you're building instruments, especially when you are talking about fan frets. So I'm going to mark out the center line. I am then going to figure out where the first and the 12th fret are gonna be. And from that, I'm going to work out my, the, 
the width of my fretboard because I don't want to be cutting any more than I need to, uh, both in the radiusing process and in the fret slotting process. So we're going to get our dimensions correct. Now the there are there are a number of thoughts on which should be the parallel fret, i.e. We are building this guitar with both a 629 millimeter or Gibson standard-ish Gibson scale length, if there is such a thing, and a 647.7 millimeter scale length, which is Fender. And uh, at some point in that arc, one of the frets will be the 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 same number fret on both scale lengths, i.e. the 10th fret is parallel, or the 12th fret is parallel. Now on basses that tends to be the 5th fret or the 7th fret, somewhere around there. Uh, I have always done guitars at the 12th fret. In this case though, it's going to be the 10th. And my reason is that doesn't give you too much stretch at either end of the fretboard, whether you're playing chords or rock and leads, you are, it's going to be comfortable. And in fact, that is the reason for a fan fret instrument. As you are playing a standard fretboard, your wrist is constantly moving to be comfortable. It's actually over here. I do know how to play guitar-ish. Um, don't look at my demos to check. Uh, please, I can't deal with the embarrassment. Uh, but with a fan fret, your wrist stays roughly where it wants to be and is comfortable and you don't get uh, too much pain, etc. Uh, unless you're playing enough, of course. Anyway, on with the fretboard. On with the center line. I have a fret calculator on my phone. It's just a nice and easy little app. This is where it gets confusing. So we have a fan fret, fan nut, and we also have a, a measurement now the width of the nut needs to be 43 millimeters. If you do that at that angle, the width across is going to be different. Not hugely different, but different. Uh, what I'm going to do is that width from the zero in the center of this crimson ruler, uh, I'm going to create the width that I want to feel here, which is going to be around about where the shorter scale length is. Anyway, 43. I'm not going to get in the way of the shot. Sorry. And whenever I've done anything mathematical like that, go over and just double check. Yep, that's fine. 43. So with the width of the nut and the width of the 12th fret, I can just join the two and I will have, or I should have, what my neck is going to look like. Always go back and double check that. We have 52.5 there, ends up being, it's going to be around about there, yep, yeah, 56, 57. The width of the nut here is 43. Fantastic. I am making this the correct width, roughly. I am going to later on take off a millimeter on either side for the binding. So I'm going to use a hand plane because this is now the correct tool for the job. Nice. 
I'm going to be using the same plane to put the radius into this fretboard. Uh, very basically, when you want to create a, a standard radius, which is, for example, 12 inches, both at the nut and at the 22nd fret, you will plane parallel to the center line the whole way uh, around. And that will give you the surface of a cone, not a cone, a cylinder. There we go. If you want to plane a compound radius, getting tighter at the nut and flatter at the 22nd fret again, you want to essentially, with your plane, follow the line of the strings themselves. And that will give you a compound radius. <sighs> you can then change your method of attack uh, as you go in order to get a particular radius. Uh, in order to do that, you have to have uh, Crimson Guitars radius gauges. No others will do. I mean, if you use anything else, your, your entire world is just going to crash down around your ears. But then I'm biased. Uh, anyway, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to do this. Uh, this fretboard is nice and flat. It's actually perfect. Uh, if I was worried about it at this stage, Putting the radius into a standard fretboard without any support is can be problematic and I would consider spot gluing it or double side taping it or using the masking tape and super glue trick etc to a thicker board that is then held in the clamps um, because that keeps it straight and perfect and what you don't want to do is plane in any issues here. In fact, just for best practice, I'm going to do that. I'm going to find something. So a chunk of uh, rosewood-ish. Uh, turning wood. I'm going to need to plane this down. I didn't need to make that perfectly square, but uh, why not? Okay, masking tape and super glue. You all know this, I am assuming all of you have watched all of my videos. If you haven't, what's keeping you? There's too many of them. Oh, I don't believe you. Uh, check it out, link in the description below. It's pretty damn useful. Uh, unless you live in United States where you tend to get good quality double-sided tape that just isn't available in the UK. Uh, anyway, masking tape on one side and on the underside of the fretboard. Burnish it down with the super glue bottle or something else nice and shiny. A little bit of super glue, a splash of accelerator, and making sure to line up the two pieces of masking tape so you don't get glue where you don't want it. You end up with a fretboard that is now temporarily but very strongly adhered to a chunk of wood, which is nice and strong and flat and will allow us to do everything we need. Compound radius, etc. Even cutting the fret slots will be easier with this to enable uh, good solid clamping. Let us proceed. Before I plane away my marks, I want to draw where my 12th fret is and my center line. You do not want to lose these things. 
and then it is simply a case of planing down and measuring as you go. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time, something that could potentially help actually is to mark a line down the edge of the fretboard to which you want to plane. Like so, I'm using that finger as a depth stop. And then you do the same line on the other side, you know that you're getting something that is, uh, that matches and you're close to what you want to be. Now, the other way is to just eyeball it and see that it is flat all the way along. Uh, or measure it, etc., etc. Now remember, I'm planing alongside, uh, along the length of the strings themselves. Okay, so now I've got those two facets. I want to go and sort of halve them. And I'm slowly getting a curve. This is taking a little bit too much material off, so wind the plane back just a little bit. Ha. All right, that's quite funny. Uh, that's pretty damn close to what I was hoping it would be. So at the nut, we're almost at 12. And at the end of the fretboard, we're almost at 16. It's not quite tidy enough yet, obviously. If you are not comfortable uh, with a hand plane, if you don't know how to sharpen them yet, as sharp as I can get them, etc., practice. It is well worth the effort. There are other methods. You can use a radius block. Uh, they are perfectly fine, so this is a 12-inch nine and a half inch radius block. Uh, and you can essentially laboriously use one of these to get it uh, all the way down to the radius that you want uh, if it is a cylindrical radius. Uh, and then you will need to use a leveling beam if you want to turn it into a compound radius. Uh, it just takes longer than using a plane, but it's essentially the same technique. For example, here is a leveling beam well used, could probably do with some new paper on it, to, to be honest. But, same thing, exactly the same thing as the plane. Go along the path of the strings. Like so, and if you are careful, uh, you will get exactly what you require. I would at least start with a plane. I've sanded this down, it's 120 grit and it is fine. I need to double check that it is straight. Use a good straight edge, of course. And that's absolutely fine. Now, <clears throat> I am going to be cutting the fret slots and then gluing it onto a neck. And once it has been re-glued, once it's been glued down to the neck, I will check again that everything is straight and perfect. Uh, I might need to adjust it a little bit again with the leveling beam, but uh, yeah, the sooner you reach perfection, the better. Now I need to mark out where the string is. Now here is my 10th fret and my center line. Always double check. Remark the parallel fret, checking that it's still parallel. Oh, there you want. And everything will be marked from that point. So I have my trusty fret calculator app open and I know that my 10th fret is at 284.322 on my base E string, which means 
But that is where my first fret is. Always tape, always tape the ruler down to the fretboard. There are a few things more annoying than marking out a whole fretboard's worth of frets and uh, everything creeping and incrementally getting worse because uh, you slipped at one crucial juncture. From this point on, it is just about drawing uh, your mark as accurately as you can. We're going to, <laughs> the calculator goes to within three decimal places. You can't actually see that, but you can get close. 36.369, I'm changing the free calculator now to the scale length of 629 millimeters. And again, I'm going to set this on my 10th fret. Ooh, I made a mistake somewhere. That one's in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll go back and fix that in a minute. <laughs> Famous last bit. 275.98, uh, which is a fraction off. Fantastic. So the eagle-eyed and quick-witted among you will have noticed that I did that a very laborious way. It is also not the most accurate. Uh, it is problematic. I did this by way of making a point. While you don't actually need a fret slot spacing rule in order to move forward with life, one of these double-sided crimson rules will make a huge difference to your life. I'm now going to use this to quickly and easily check my work. Uh, pair the one that I did by mistake, which really was by mistake, and just double check everything. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Four scale lengths, uh, and good to go. Nice. And from here, it is a simple case to, at the string line, draw along. And here we go. That looks pretty good. Now my pencil lines are 0.9 millimeters wide. That's the size of lead that I'm using. And as long as I drew them in the right place down the center of where it is, it's, it's absolutely fine. Uh, however, when you are cutting fret slots by hand, it is best to have every little bit of help that you can find. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is use that and a scalpel blade to mark down the center of these pencil lines, and it's a lot easier than it actually sounds. Uh, that will give my saw something to bite into and something to follow as it cuts. And this makes, it does make a huge difference, especially if this is not something that you do a lot. And even if it is, it's worth doing. The next stage, which is pretty much the most straightforward, is to take a fret leveling file, this fret leveling file, <laughs> uh, fret slotting saw, uh, and cut along the lines. Now, I personally do not like using depth stops. Uh, they, I should redesign that. Anyway, there's a couple of holes in our uh, saw here so you can uh, bolt a depth stop in there and cut only to the depth of the tang of your fret. Uh, I personally prefer to use masking tape, which, there we go, we're hiding. So a strip of masking tape, uh, leaving free only a small amount of the blade, and yeah, that serves the purpose very well. <clears throat> like so. And then it is simply a case of following the lines. Uh, use your hands in the usual way, 
or fingers at least, and you'll be done. Uh, now these saws cut on the pull, and I'm going to leave that one as such because I need to go through and with a different saw cut all the way through. People often ask me why I wait until I've already radius the fretboard before cutting the slots. And uh, the reason is quite simple. Pulling your saw through a, an eight centimeter wide flat chunk of wood is a lot more work than pulling it through the top of a curve. And essentially I'm cutting a smaller amount, but it's less laborious. And I am, after all, a lazy man. And here we have it. We're uh, we're done for the day. I am quite happy. I'm really happy with how that's gone. Uh, in the next video, I am going to be making a neck, multi-laminate, uh, mahogany, flame maple, etc., and gluing the fretboard in place. And uh, this guitar is going to come together quite nicely. It is probably going to be over. 10 or 12 episodes going live on Saturdays uh, on the Crimson YouTube channel. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays or other points in the week will be other videos on various subjects. So yeah, check it all out. Thank you for your support. Click like, subscribe, hit the notification button and all those things if you haven't yet, uh, it's important. And go to crimsonguitars.com and if you haven't What's the word? If you have an inkling that you want to build guitars, let us help you do it. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Now I need to turn off all the lights. I've got four strips of LEDs here. I've got another sort of a sort of, what's that? An indirect light on that side. I've got one there, another one there, and another one there, and then all of the normal building lights. It's almost, I mean, I could just carry on building and not have to go through all that hassle. Come on then. One. Four and one, five. Done. That is all. Aha! Fantastic. Nope, nope, it's not. Where are you? There we go. All done. Goodbye.